Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and it's getting crazier by the minute. And today, I thought I'd talk about flippers and investors because their activity is ramping up on both the selling side and the buying side. And there are some things that you should watch out for if you're selling to them, if you're currently under contract with them, or if you're, and what's the difference between a flipper and an investor and what does it mean to you? There's a lot of people out there that think real estate's gonna go down quickly so they're consider, consider, considering accepting an offer from either one of those categories. So I thought it was a good time to say, if you are, let me give you some watch outs. Now a flipper wants to buy your home and turn around and move it quickly, usually shortly after 90 days, because FHA won't approve an FHA financing unless it's you've held it for at least 90 days. So it can be FHA on day 91. So companies like open door and offer pad are going to come in they're going to buy it from you they're going to probably replace the carpet they may replace kitchen countertops fixtures some lights they're going to paint then they're going to put it on the market for a higher price now that's getting harder and harder for them right now and one of the things that we need to watch out for is remember in march 2020 when they told us all to stay home all of us thought real estate was toast including me never saw all these stimulus checks coming they all stopped. They, they just quit. Their eye buying, they, they got out of every contract they had. We have suspended our buying. And uh, they could do that because they weighed the financial risk of losing the earnest money because they can get out. Anybody can cancel on you at any time. Their risk is their good faith deposit. That's what they lose. But a lot of people were going ahead and accepting that measly little $1,000 good faith deposit they were putting down. So when they pulled out, didn't cost them as much money as you would think because they were only giving away $1,000. Now, when Zillow came out and later on and decided to, they were losing too much money trying to flip homes because they didn't know what the heck they were doing, they were having to add um, more money to their earnest money. They had $1,000 earnest money and they go, we'll give you 10. Um, they were trying to avoid being sued uh, and still wanted to have goodwill, so they upped the earnest money. But today, if you're under contract with one of them or you're going to go under contract with one of them, insist on a higher good faith deposit. Because there are some warning signs out there right now. When you look at like OfferPad, this orange line is number of homes under contract and the blue line is the number of homes that they have in inventory. And right now they have 242 homes that they have and only 71 contracts. That's a six month supply of homes. That's not good considering that they were able to just move them as fast as they got them back here. And right now, in just a space of 90 days, they're upside down. So these 71 that are down here, are they just going to go ahead and move through them? Are they going to cancel any of them? These up here, these 242, they're going to have to reduce the price. So they may go ahead and decide strategically that they want to lose some money to get out from underneath their inventory. So it's going to be interesting to watch. I don't have open doors numbers in front of me, but I would venture to guess they're the same, only larger because they're bigger than OfferPad. And OfferPad's the more conservative of the two companies. So again, you can also ask for representation. So, but the only way to do that to get your real estate agent involved is they have to submit your home for the offer. You can't submit the home for the offer, find out what they offer you, and then ask a real estate agent to represent you. They have to go in first. Now, they have improved their process a little bit where before they would just see the outside of your house, they'd look up an address, and they'd shoot you an offer. And then uh, if you didn't like it, you could always tell them what you had in the house. Hey, wait, I've got, you know, granite countertops. I got a pool. I got all this. They finally improved their website where you can actually upload photos to the inside of the house. So they can sit there in the office and go, oh, the inside looks nice. We didn't know that before. So that's convenient. An agent can also get involved when they submit the house by putting the pictures in and then putting in any other comp information that they think will help justify a better price for you. And we can help negotiate an earnest money deposit that's fair and equitable. Now, that's iBuyers. They're the flippers. And there are individ individual investors that use the same business model, they're flippers. They want to buy it, remodel it, move it. We're going to see a little bit less of that now as things start to flatten out, but good flippers can spot a bargain when they see one. 
and they can still make their margin and sell the house and make some money. So what you have to watch out for on both flippers and investors, investors that want to buy your house and hold it for the long term, is they'll come in and they'll offer you a price. Now the price is not going to be as high as what you can get off the MLS. And that's okay because you're paying that, you're, you're lowering your price for that convenience because they're cash, they can close quicker. But sometimes these investors send out multiple offers in one day and then they go out and just cherry pick them. So you may think you have an offer. You have a contract sitting right in front of you. Verbal offers don't mean anything in real estate. So get a, get a concrete offer. I'm offering you $400,000 and, and $4,000 in earnest money. But they could still get out in, a, in an inspection period. Sometimes they say a five-day inspection period or 10-day. But they'll come out and sometimes they just drive by your house and go, you know, you know I don't want it. And they cancel it. They don't like the neighborhood. They can do that. Most of them send their contractor over the next day the very next day. And they go in and they look at the electrical panel, they check out the pl plumbing, the AC, and the roof. They don't get themselves too involved in the cosmetic improvements that they want to do inside because they just kind of assume they're going to have to do that anyway. But they want to make sure there's no big ticket items that need to be repaired. And they can come back to you and go, you know what, um, that AC has got, you know, one year of life left in it and uh, your plumbing is shot and uh, your roof needs new underlayment. So we need you to credit us X amount at the close of escrow. Now, do you have the opportunity to fix that? Probably, but in most cases, open door offer pad and investors, especially the institutional investors, prefer to use their own contractors. And that's why they want to give you the opportunity to credit them some money at the close of escrow. Because their contractors are going to cost them less than it's going to cost you. So that's probably the best way to go. And since you want out quickly anyway, you're going to agree to that. But be careful and make sure that everything that you have in writing is going to make you whole if they decide to bail out. Because a lot of the iBuyers right now are right on that margin where they're not sure they want to play the short game right now. Their inventory is increasing. Their sales are decreasing they may end up pulling another one of those surprises and we don't know what's going to happen. Now, the investor that's coming in buying your whole home for the long term, uh, they don't care. If real estate dips down this year, they, they really don't care. They want to buy it. They want to fix it up, put a renter in, and they'll ride out whatever storm there is. Even the over half of the homes on the MLS right now that are up for sale are either an iBuyer, an investor, or an Airbnb. And they're either institutional investors or individual investors. And that is half of our existing active um, homes that are for sale. And uh, in, included in that number is also spec homes, uh, builder homes. So let me correct that just a little bit. But uh, over half the homes are not investors, but just about, pretty close, about a third. And so they're selling them either because they want to take profit and move on and maybe buy something else or they feel that they just want to get out open door and offer pad have always been a large number in this market so it isn't that their number of homes for sale has jumped up versus times times in the past and that's when you look at this chart right here you can see that you know they they've always been in the game here they've always had more inventory than uh, um, contracts back in january but then it just changed and got very favorable for them until April, and now the wheels have just fallen off the wagon. So they've always had a lot of listings out there for you to for you to look at. Um, so if you're looking at going with one of them and you need any help, send me an email at rickatrickhelps.com and uh, reach out to an agent that you work with personally and make sure that they submit the offer for you instead of you doing it ahead of time. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, rick at rickhelps.com. Have a great day.